What is up guys, welcome back to another video. So following up from last week pulling routine, today we're going to be focusing on pushing movement patterns only. I want to keep this intro shorter than usual, so you guys know the drill, you can do this routine both in circuit style or reps and sets. You can adjust the difficulty of the routine by either doing more or less reps or by selecting the right progression of each movement for your own individual level. But as always, I'll be giving you progressions for each one of the exercises. Exercises. Again, we're still going to be focusing on understanding the biomechanics, understanding the different angles of pushing, both in straight arms and bent arms, as well as working on our explosive pushing strength and a slow control reps. Make sure you are fully warmed up before beginning this routine, and without further ado, let's get started. All right guys, so let's begin. So last week we start with explosive pull-ups. Now we're gonna start again with an explosive movement for pushing. The reason we're starting with an explosive movement is because you wanna be fully fresh when you're working towards explosiveness. Again, we're gonna go for low reps, between four to six reps, but again, just stop the movement as soon as you feel like you're losing explosiveness. And you're gonna, if you're doing this on reps and sets, go for five, six, or even seven sets since you're working on a low rep number, you wanna increase the number of sets. So we're gonna go for a straight bar dips. I'm going to show you the easier progression first, just because a straight bar dips in and of itself without being explosive, it's already kind of an intermediate to advanced exercise. So if you don't have your first straight bar dips, I would work on explosive pushing by working just on push-ups. And again, how we work on explosiveness is you get into the position, you lower, with control and on the pushing up you're gonna go as fast as you can then you lower with control and even take it a step further and get your arms off the floor just like that so basically when you are pushing and you're leaving the ground your arms stay completely straight and then it's when you land and then you try to control that movement down we're gonna do that same with a straight bar dips and i'm gonna give you two options if you're more of an intermediate I would go just for explosive, keeping your hands grip to the bar the entire time. And if you're a little bit more advanced, uh, grab the bar and as soon as you push up, you are going to release the bar and then catch the bar again. So choose a progression that allows you to go again for four to six reps and you feel comfortable and it's not dangerous because leaving the bar is kind of dangerous. So I'm gonna go for actually leaving the bar and I'm gonna go for six reps. So let's go. Get up top of the bar, elbows in. Lean slightly forward, lower with control. Push yourself up as fast as you can go. Lift the bar and control the movement down. That's for one, let's go for five more. And last one, control down. Make sure you're always trying to lean forward to actually keep the balance. Like if you lean back, you may just fall on your back. And if you're doing this on a high bar, it may be even more dangerous. Next one, we're going to go for tuck, plunge, raises. Now, uh, the progression for the beginners. Let me show you first, actually, the intermediate version. So with the straight arms, we're working towards a straight arm vertical pushing, basically. So actually, let me demonstrate without using the bars. You have your arms right here, and the movement that you're going to do is basically raising your arms overhead. This would be basically tuck plunge to actually handstand. We're gonna work on this plane from here towards here. So instead of going from here to here, we're gonna go from here to here. And the trick to actually raise yourself up is by using your serratus anterior, which its main function is basically protracting your scapula. So you wanna keep a strong protraction the entire time. And basically imagine like you are pushing as much as you can. And remember, you're gonna start here. And you're gonna bring your hands overhead, keeping that protraction of the scapula. So anyways, back to the exercise. If we go up the intermediate version, I would say it will be like a tuck. to so protract your scapula, externally rotate your elbows. And from here, push with your serratus. Don't lift your hips, lift your entire torso only by pushing and leaning forward and then you come back down. Now, 
that would be the intermediate version. If you wanna go higher, like more towards advanced, go for advanced tuck or straddle or full planche races. And if you're a beginner, what I would do is get on your deep bar, put your feet on the deep bar. I want you to first activate your scapula by bringing it forward and down, so protraction and depression, so everything is locked in place. Then you're going to bring one knee up, keeping your arms straight. Remember, we're, we're working towards a straight arm pushing strength. Then bringing the other knee up, try to hold it if you can, but if you cannot hold it, just work on the negative, and then jump back towards the bars and then repeat that negative. So that would be the easier version, and again, the advanced version, go for full planche races. I'm gonna go for the intermediate, I'm gonna go for tuck, kind of an advanced tuck, and we're gonna go for eight reps. So grab the bar, about the distance of the bar, <laughs> support yourself up, externally rotate your elbows so your biceps is facing forward, go into a tuck L seat, and bring your shoulders forward into protraction. From here, using the serratus, not your hips, you lean forward, try to hold for a couple seconds, keeping your arms straight the entire time. They come back down, that's for one. Let's go for seven more. Make sure your hips, when they go up, they don't go higher than your head and your shoulders. Everything is in line. If it's too easy, you can go to advanced tuck. I think we've got two more. And last one, push up, lean forward, hips are level with your shoulders, arms are straight, and come back down. Woo. So again, if that's too easy, if you can do more reps, you can do more reps, but I would recommend go for advanced tuck or go for straddle if you're working towards the planche. That's an amazing exercise. As I said on my past video, even if you're not working towards skills, there are some exercises, especially the straight arm exercises, that are going to help you towards either the front lever in the pulling workout or to the planche in the pushing workout. Now let's go back to vertical pushing up. We're gonna do, again, handstand push-ups. Now, handstand push-ups, we have covered many progressions in the past videos. You can do either pike push-ups on the floor, basically your hands in the floor and your feet on the floor. Well, in this case, I'm using blocks, but I'll let you know why I'm using blocks right now. This one will be the easiest progression. Then elevate your feet to elevated pike push-ups if you wanna make it harder, or handstand push-ups against the wall if you are on that level, or if you are in freestanding handstand push-ups, which is the one that I'm going to do, go for that. We're gonna go for eight reps, and the reason that I'm using blocks is just to increase a little bit more the range of motion and just getting more strength in the process. So let's go for eight of those. Place your hands at about shoulder width apart. As I said on one of my past videos, if you place your hands a little wider, it actually makes the handstand push-ups a little bit easier. And also, if you're doing it on the floor, you wanna place your hands slightly to the outside. It actually makes the handstand push-ups a little bit easier, but I would encourage you to actually keep those hands facing forward. And if you're using something to elevate yourself, I like to just grab it here, unless you have something that actually allows you to place your entire hands. So, hands shoulder width apart, a little wider. Let's go for eight of those. So go up into your handstand, however you like. As always, I like to press up. Get up into your handstand, find your balance first. Wrap your triceps in, point your toes, engage your core, lower down with control, keeping your elbows in as low as you can go. Push yourself back up. As for one, let's go for seven more. Sure to breathe. Inhale when you down, exhale when you push. Keep everything tight, keep your core engaged when you're coming down, as well as when you're pushing up. Last one. Four. And push. Get it. Get it. <laughs> there we go. Damn. So maybe I shouldn't have 
an elevation. But basically, again, guys, choose your progression. If you can do freestanding hands and push-ups, go for that. But if that's too hard, work on pike push-ups, elevated pike push-ups. Choose your progression for that. Now we're gonna move on. Let me actually catch my breath. Whew. We're gonna move on to a straight arms again, but instead of doing a vertical straight arm pushing, which is basically from here to here or from here to here, it depends. We're gonna work towards horizontal straight arm pushing, which basically is your adduction of your arms or, or your shoulders. Last time on the pulling version, we did uh, abduction of the arms, keeping our arms straight. Now we're gonna go for add Adduction of the arms. Now, to modify it, uh, if you are a beginner, bring the rings very, very high and basically work right here. The trick for this exercise is we're working towards a straight arm, so even a slight bend on your arms is going to make a huge difference. So you wanna find a progression that allows you to keep those arms completely straight and that allows you to go towards full range of motion and then closing up. So if you're more advanced, bring the rings lower towards the floor, or if you're even more more advanced, find something to elevate yourself and be completely parallel to the ground or even decline to make it even harder. So this height is, I would say, beginner towards mm, kind of an advanced, but it all depends if you're working ever towards a straight and pushing strength. So find a progression that allows you to go for eight reps, which is what we're gonna go for. So grab the rings, arms are completely straight, a couple points that I wanna mention is that if you're working towards muscle building, try to keep your scapula either neutral or retracted when you open up. So you open up and you open the chest so you get a complete stretch on your pec and then when you close down, you can protract your scapula. But if you're working towards mastering the planche and the Maltese, I would recommend to keep a full protraction and depression of your scapula the entire time. So basically, you keep the scapula activated and then you open and close keeping the scapula. I'm gonna go for keeping that protraction because I really wanna get the planche. So let's go for that. Let's go for eight of those. Grab the rings one more time. Walk back. Arms completely straight, protract your scapula. Engage your core by tucking your pelvis in. Open, keeping your arms straight. As far as you can go, push yourself up. That's for one. Let's go for seven more. Keep your body straight the entire time. As you get to the top, protract a little more, depress a little more your scapula. If you're struggling to keep your arms straight, it's probably too hard of a progression for you. So maybe you want to scale it down. Let's go for two more. And last one. So, yeah, basically just adjust the rings higher if you're a beginner or lower if you're a little bit more advanced. You can also do partial reps, so basically getting up to here and not completely 180 degrees. Just because this is a very hard exercise, especially on your biceps and in your radiobrachialis, which is the muscle right here. So if you haven't ever work towards a straight arm. This can be kind of painful. So there is a place for partial rep, especially if you are just adapting uh, your body to a new exercise. The same happens to the hands and push-ups. You don't, you don't have to go all the way down. You can work on partial reps, and that's gonna increase your strength to eventually being able to do the full movement. Now going back to bent arm and horizontal this time. So with the straight bar dips in explosive, which is vertical pushing down, now we're gonna go for horizontal pushing, which is the push-up. And variations for the, for the push-ups, I've mentioned so, so many, and there are so many variations all across YouTube. So if you are a beginner, go for knee push-ups or elevated push-ups. If you're intermediate, go for regular push-ups. If you are more advanced, you can either add weight, uh, do it on the rings if you want to, or what we're going to do is work on unilateral work. We're gonna work towards the one-arm push-up. Now, this is an advanced skill, so if you guys want a full tutorial 
about one arm push-up, please leave it in the comment section down below. But for this one, use only one hand, place it on the floor, your feet, you're gonna place it in a straddle position to keep the balance. The closer your feet are, obviously the harder the exercise is going to become. So go as wide as you can to be able to perform the movement with good form, because if you try to go close, but you are like twisting too much, that is not the best option for you, or, and you're not going to build real strength in that movement. So open your legs, it doesn't really matter that much in a strength, we're trying to do the movement with perfect form. So open your legs, doesn't matter, go as wide as you can go if you want to. Now, support yourself on one arm, try to not rotate to either side, but keep your body completely straight. You're going to rotate your triceps in your elbow, you're gonna push it back towards your hips so you engage your lat. Basically, you are depressing your scapula and also protracting your scapula. From here, you're going to lean forward. You can put the hand behind your back, you can put it anywhere. Lean forward, keep your elbow in, twist just a tiny bit and push yourself up. That's for one, let's go for five more. your body tight the entire time. Last one, lean forward, come down with control and push yourself back up. Now switch hands, place your left hand if you're doing one arm push up if not just go for regular push ups depending on your level. Open your legs, one hand behind the back, wrap your tricep in, lean forward, Come down with control, push yourself back up. So one, let's go for five more. Keep your core engaged through the entire movement. And last one, lean forward, elbow in lowest portion you can go, and push. Again, here we're working, well, I work towards the strength because we're keeping a low rep range, and that would be my max. I think I can go for like seven or eight, and that would be like basically my max. So choose a progression of pushing, of horizontal pushing, that actually allows you to go for whichever goal you're choosing. So if you're work, working towards muscle building, go for a 12 or, Plus, I mean, you can get to 20, 30 reps. As long as you're going to failure, you're going to build muscle. But if you're working towards a strength, try to choose a progression that three or five is going to be your max. Like you struggle to actually get to five reps. Now, moving on, we're gonna go back again to vertical pushing down. We're gonna do a dip, just one single dip, the same that we did on the pull workout that we did. One single pull up, we did 20 seconds coming up, 20 seconds at the top, and then 20 seconds coming down. Now we're gonna do the dip, and we're gonna do 30 seconds coming down first, then 30 seconds hold at the bottom, and then 30 seconds pushing up to work on those type one muscle fibers, which is the slow twitch muscle fibers, basically. The difference here with the push-up is in the push-up, we're doing first the concentric part, which is the positive part of the movement. Then we hold it uh, at the top, isometric hold for 20 seconds, and then we did the eccentric part last. Here on the dip, we're gonna reverse that by doing first the eccentric part, which is the negative portion. Then we're gonna hold at the bottom, but since we're holding on a stretch position, I don't want you to hold completely to the full range of motion, completely relaxed, but I want you to keep a small contraction when you're holding on those 30 seconds, and then we're gonna work on that concentric part. Now, we are 120% stronger on the negative portion than on the positive portion, and we're doing the positive portion last here. So it's going to be much harder than actually what we did with the pull-up. So what I would recommend, if you're a beginner, you can do 10, 10, 10, intermediate, 20, 20, 20. I'm gonna go for kind of intermediate two hours advanced, 30, 30, 30. Again, if you can do more, go for more. But since the hardest part is the last one, you can choose to do 
let's put it at, at 10 seconds as an example. You can do 10, 10, and then five on the coming up because it's gonna be really, really challenging to actually push yourself up once you have done the negative and the isometric hole at the bottom. I'm gonna go for 30, 30, 30, but again, adjust the timing to your level and build your way up to eventually increase both numbers, all three numbers, basically the concentric, the eccentric, and the isometric hole. So support yourself on the top. Let's put it on the clock. We're gonna start in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Start coming down for 30 seconds. As a slow, as controlled as possible. 10 seconds in. Keep your elbows in. Twenty seconds in, ten more seconds. Push your shoulders down. Five more seconds. Three, two, one, and hold. Now, again, instead of relaxing, do like a little push and hold it right there. Keep your core engaged. Halfway there, fifty more seconds. If you're with me. 10 more seconds, last 3 seconds, and start pushing yourself up for 30 seconds if you are with me, or 20 or 10. Lean forward slightly, keep your elbows in, halfway there, you should be at 90 degree, around that. 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and look out. Whew. All right, that was tough. Comment down below if you can do 30, 30, 30, or if you can do one minute, one minute, one minute. That would be awesome. Uh, finishing off with the last exercise, uh, we cover the ring curls on the pulling video for our biceps. Now we're gonna finish off with a skull crusher for our triceps. Now, several modifications. The higher the bar, obviously the easier the exercise is going to be. So as a beginner, I will start on a high bar. If you have it, you wrap your triceps in, you come all the way down, and then you push up. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is basically breaking from here to here, instead of keeping everything tight and engaged, you wanna use your quads, your core, your glutes, your low back, your psoas muscle to keep everything tight. So when you come forward, you are not flexing, but you're actually bringing all the way up. Now, if you are more advanced, lower that elevation. I'm gonna go for this kind of elevation. I could have gone for a lower one, which uh, it's going to be harder, but I've chosen this elevation because it's going to allow me to go for full shoulder flexion when I come all the way down. Uh, the benefits of that is basically a bigger stretch on your triceps. You contract your triceps when you go in this motion and you stretch it when you go in this motion, but we have a long head that is kind of attached to the lat and part of the shoulder that is a stretch most when you put your arms overhead. It's basically the difference between doing a, a tricep push down in the gym or doing a triceps overhead. So find something that allows you to go for 10 reps. And if you wanna go for the full range of motion, choose a bar that allows you to actually get into the range of motion. Or you can choose a low bar and work more towards a pure strength because it's gonna be harder. But again, you're not gonna be able to go through that full range of motion. So grab the bar, both shoulder width apart. Wrap your triceps in, walk your feet back. Again, as always, engage your core so everything's tight. Wrap your triceps in one more time. Now lean forward, keeping your elbows in. Go as far as you can go. Get a nice stretch in the triceps. Push yourself back up. That is for one. Let's go for nine more. Make sure 
sure your triceps are in the entire time. Even when you come all the way down, you keep the knee when you push up. Defend yourself, flaring your elbows out. I mean, you're going way too deep. Just need to scale it down. We got two more. Keep everything tight. Engage your core, wrap your triceps in. Over down. Push up, and last one. So there you have it guys. This is what I would call a complete pushing routine. Again, we're working towards all angles in both bent arm and straight arms. If you have any questions about this routine, please leave it in the comment section down below and we'll make sure to answer as many comments as we can. Just a little reminder guys, a Saturno Movement apparel and equipment is already available for purchase. So make sure to check out our store. I'm gonna link everything down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up to support the channel. Also share with somebody that you want to challenge to do this workout with you. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any content in the future. Stay tuned for next week for the final video of this series. We're gonna work on legs to finish this video series. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And as always guys, I'll see you all next week. Watch out. to breathe. Inhale when you look down, exhale when you push. <laughs> <laughs> blooper, huevón. Mega blooper.